Horror shows suck. They suck. Seriously, they suck. They're not good. Most of there's like two good ones. Most of them are not good. Seriously, in today's world, we have so many types of TV shows. We have comedy shows. We have action shows. We have superhero shows, musical shows, shows about poor people, shows about fucking chess and karate and dating people from foreign countries. You get it. There's an abundance of content. But for horror shows, there's like only a few that anyone seems to give a shit about. But I want to take this time to talk about a slept on horror show that I think genre fans should really check out because it's highly underrated. Slasher is about, you guessed it, people being killed by a slasher. OMG, how original. And you're probably thinking, why should I care? Well, I'll tell you why you should care, bitch. This one is actually pretty good. It's it's not amazing, but it's like all the best slasher movies. It's actually a lot of fun. So Slasher is a show that first started on a network called Chiller, which is not just the network for everything chill, but then it moved to Netflix for a hot sec until they produced the Dumpster Fire, which is season three, and now it's apparently going to shudder for season four, and it will probably end up on the Discovery Channel for season five, or Discovery Plus, or whatever the fuck we're calling it. So I'm gonna start to so I'm gonna start talking about season one and it's gonna have some small spoiler stuff in it So if you haven't seen it, I'd give it a try, but that's your warning spoilers ahead. Okay, let's fucking go We open on Halloween night and this dude and his wife are killed by this guy who's dressed up like that one dude from Shrek He's called the executioner and when the cops show up He's actually delivered this baby and is just chilling this baby grows up to be Sarah, who's married to this reporter guy, and she returns to the town 20 years later to get answers about what happened. We get introduced to some characters like cop guy and the gay realtors, other cop guy, horny priest, I'm sorry, I'm bad at remembering names, and uh, this bitchy neighbor. There are decent people Jesus. who live in this neighborhood. Children. <laughs> you have a whole house. Pick a room. Are you serious? Anyway, right when she, uh, anyway, right when she gets moved back into, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. anyway, right when she gets moved back into town, the murders start happening again, and we learn that each of these characters has some shady secrets that's probably gonna get them kanked off the show eventually. The parts of the show I'd say are the best are the ones for the characters. I actually like them for the most part, or at least find them to be somewhat interesting or relatable or batshit crazy. But yeah, probably the best part of the show is the parts that are just totally insane. Like Shrek level insane. Thus says the Lord. Says the Lord. And righteous. Deliver from the hand of the oppressor him who has been robbed. 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 There's a whole storyline about Sarah's parents being huge nymphos and having a secret stash of portos hidden in their house of them just fucking various characters in the town. I think Tommy Lee makes an appearance in one of them and Sarah keeps going back to them and watching them like it's an episode of 90 Day Fiance. I love that fucking show, man. Their bitchy neighbor is also their nosy neighbor because the second this guy leaves, she breaks into their house, steals their porn, eats leftover pizza in the fridge, and spits it out in the sink? What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't even feel bad when this happens. Also, this guy is showing to be doing cocaine a lot. So, the killer finds a way to sneak rat poison into his cocaine. I'm not exactly sure how or when he got the chance to do this, but whatever. Earlier I talked about horny priest and um Father forgive me for I have sinned. Oh. <gasps> a character I didn't mention is named Trent and he has a pretty fun and normal hobby that is a uh, cross species taxidermy. Like this guy is incredible. He makes the Sawyer family look like the Partridge family. There's of course a grandma character who does normal grandma things, you know, like banging people always and dropping cinder blocks at her friends and putting them in a coma for like 68 years or something. She gets killed by having a cinder block tied to her feet and throwing in her pond like she's Kenny from South Park because, you know, symbolism. And this newspaper lady gets her head chopped off and then they find it the next day at a diner in the deep fryer. Like this guy started work drop some fries in, serve them to someone, and he didn't notice a fucking head in the deep fryer. I used to be a fry cook, okay? If I served someone a finger instead of a french fry, my ass would be back to mopping duty. 
other cop guy apparently kidnapped this high school girl and he's had her in prison in his house for four years. She even has a kid now. And I wonder where we've uh, seen this before. Also, his wife apparently has just been aware of this the whole time. And it's just like, oh, well, I guess boys will be boys. He's also seen to be fucking the town prostitute. Because I guess his underage sex slave just wasn't enough. When he's about to get caught, he kills the hooker and goes home. and decides he's going to burn them all alive. Now, he doesn't do it. But I appreciate how fucking insane this dude is at this point, and it doesn't matter because the executioner just ends up burning him alive anyway. Also, the OG executioner decides he's gonna have a little nice redemption arc. I wasn't doing God's work. There was no higher purpose. It was my ego, my wounded pride that drove me to murder. After this, he sacrifices himself to save his daughter. Now, if you're watching this video, you know I've pretty much just ruined everything about Season 1, but what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to ruin the killer reveal, because honestly, it actually surprised me, and usually these kind of things don't really surprise me in TV shows, so I'm going to let you figure this one out on your own. We do wrap up with Sarah and her husband, and they are driving off into the sunset. Yay, it's fun, it's happy, and then this new family moves into their house, and their daughter kills a cat for no reason. I don't really know why this is in here, but um, anyway, Season 1 is good. Go watch it. Thanks. So for the second season, they thankfully changed things up a bit. This time, our story takes place during the winter time, out in the middle of nowhere. Now, being from Minnesota, I can tell you that this can be a pretty creepy place to be, even though I spent most winters inside playing Gears of War. We also have a brand new killer. Instead of that guy from Shrek, we now have the killer from Urban Legend. Let's run through this new batch of characters, because they're all really unique and different from each other. This time, we got Counselor 1, Counselor 2, Counselors 3, and 4, and Peter. So these characters are shown in the beginning to have committed a murder of their fellow counselor at a summer camp. And then we fast forward four years to them all returning to the camp to dispose of the evidence. When they get back, they are introduced to some more characters, which include Crazy Hippie, Karate Hippie, these two weirdos, Bald Guy, and Boring Lady. I'm so sorry. I'm so terrible with names. <laughs> Okay, so there's a lot going on with these characters in this season, so I'm gonna try to get through it as quick as I can. Okay, here we go. Counselor One used to secretly have a thing for Talavander during her goth phase and the flashbacks, so she comes up with a plan to get her killed and then she gets her eyes gouged out. Counselor Two is a fucking idiot. You know, we're not allowed to say that word. He used to secretly have a crush on Talavander, even though Peter was secretly sleeping with her behind his back. Well, maybe you're the one that needs to get their eyes checked because I'm seeing perfectly clear. I'm seeing 2020. She don't wanna f you, you little dick, musty ass, broke ass. He sexually assaults her, gets sexually assaulted in a school bus before he gets barbecued. Counselor 3 used to date Peter before he cheated on her with Talavander and then she hits her with a log. No. Then she sleeps with him again and makes a snow angel. Counselor 4 is a sassy one who brings a gun to the camp and says mean things to everyone. Fuck you, Susan. Thanks, Shut babe. the fuck up, Noah. She's the one who gets away and at the end she goes to jail. Now, let's talk about the one character whose name I actually remember, Peter. He's basically the only character who isn't an ass face. He actually wants to come clean about what him and his friends did. And when shit starts going down, he's actually trying to help and not being a fucking idiot like this guy. Now, I'd say about half this season takes place in flashbacks, showing us what led up to the incident where they killed their friend. And usually, I would fucking hate this. Seriously, so many shows have this identical format, it is so annoying. But it's done pretty decent here, there's actually some cool parallels between these timelines. Like, all of the flashbacks take place in summer, and it's all bright and shiny, and then after they murder her, everything is cold and dark and snowy and depressing, so I'm gonna give it a pass here, it's fine. So just like the last season, there are definitely some silly things I noticed about this story, and you probably will too. Like, all these people need to do to not get killed by this guy is just stay indoors. Seriously, every time they go outside, the killer shows up and ganks one of them. Stop going outside, it's fucking cold outside. Stay indoors, you idiots. Fucking idiots. The way this season wraps up is the killer gives Peter an ultimatum. He's told that he can save Boring Girl, who seems to be the only innocent one of the bunch, and all he has to do is sacrifice himself. And since this is the only character who actually wants to take responsibility for his actions, he hangs himself, and this lady gets to go free. It's a bit morbid, but I think it's earned. 
Overall, I think this season is a step above the previous. The setting is a lot creepier, and I think it was a good idea to make these characters more isolated. Also, while these characters are less likable overall, they are a lot more complex. So with two solid seasons, I'd say we got ourselves a pretty good horror anthology series, am I right? So how did season three turn out? Yeah, it's so bad it deserves its own video. Please like and subscribe.